let's first look at the bolded demand in this letter, which says we call on all AI labs to immediately pause for at least six months the training of AI systems more powerful than GPT-4. So Jan, could you make the case for why this kind of pause is necessary? In some ways, the goal with the meta with the letter was like more like a meta goal, uh, less about uh, it was less about the pause, much less about the six months pause. The letter said uh, at least six months pause, mm -hmm. uh, but it was uh, basically the goal was to create uh, common knowledge in a way that like people have something to point to and say that look, we are concerned and we see that other people are also concerned. Uh, let's do something about it. The letter was like very, very, very explicit that this is not about pausing the AI research. Okay. It was very particular that this is about pausing the large scale AI experiments that now, now are uh, kind of reaching hundreds of millions of dollars. They are ex experiments that are sort of like, I call them summoning of AI because uh, they are something like 200 lines of code uh, and then like enormous amount of data and they are unsupervised. The thing will be run for months uh, w without humans checking what's happening. And then they stop, then they do the checkpoint, as they called, and that, uh, then they see what this thing is capable, and then they can resume or or stop. Uh, now, the problem is that uh, with, with these uh, experiments, uh, they are producing uncontrollable minds. So I think one reason for some kind of pause or some kind of timeout is that that's informed the planet that their lives are being risked now by the insiders. The insiders agree that, like, I have not met with anyone right now in this lab who says that, sure, the risk is less than 1% of blowing up the planet. So it's important that people know that their lives are being risked by these very particular experiments. This is can be seen as a political trial balloon that's often done in mm. many contexts. You raise a flag and you see who salutes, basically. What they're trying to do here is to get more people to perceive that more of us are okay with something like regulating this because of particular concerns they have. So, you know, my issues would be, is this the sort of thing now that's worth doing that level of coordination and regulation? Uh, that would be the key question. That is, this is a good thing to do if in fact we are near the time when it would be a good idea to coordinate in such a way and that this would be a good first step in that direction. But if you think this is too early and we might go too far, too fast, then this would be a bad idea. What are the conditions that you would want to see met before you take your finger off that pause button in terms of training these large language models that are at the level of GPT-4 or above? There should be kind of affirmative uh, cases made by people who are, or companies who are doing those uh, experiments that these will be safe. How to do the, the pause is pretty simple. You just like uh, uh, have US government to say that like no such big training runs until there there is uh, some external auditing and uh, some constraints in place. By external auditing, are you saying that someone from the federal government should come in and you know the federal government needs to establish some sort of guidelines and an agency to go in and make sure they're meeting these guidelines? So this is actually like a po point where I kind of like have to say that like I am kind of less uh, informed and and uh, less knowledgeable uh, about like what is kind of uh, uh, the most effective uh, and kind of most targeted uh, intervention there. Uh, I would like uh, kind of the companies themselves uh, together with uh, some external non-biased uh, stakeholders to work out what these uh, constraints should be. Well, it seems to me the main issue we should be discussing here is how plausible is it that if they let GPT-5 do training in the untamed mode, then there's a 1% chance of destroying the world in that mm. training run? Because that just seems crazy high. These things, you know, they just take input and they give you output until you hook them up as an agent in the world that can do things. They can't do things. And... The usual fear people worried about is somehow this thing will be so smart that it will then figure out how to improve itself, but mm -hmm. it doesn't have the abilities to improve itself unless you give it those powers. So 
the question is, why should we be worried that the next training run will destroy the world? Why not just talk about where this whole thing could go and how we want to worry about that? And I'm, I'm happy, like I said, I have some compromise policy recommendations for how we should, you know, in a mild way, try to deal with some of the bigger long-term problems, but I, I just can't buy this short-term risk. Hey, thanks for watching that excerpt from our live stream with Robin Hansen and Jan Tallinn about artificial intelligence, existential risk, and the dangers of preemptive regulation. You can watch our full conversation right here or another excerpt right here.